guys! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and this is Catadactyl. If you're new here, I talk about books. And if you're not new here, welcome back. So, today I'm doing a book haul that is long overdue. So these are all the books I picked up in Australia when I was there for my wedding. We had only one free day after the wedding, so of course we went to six bookstores. Yes, six bookstores. So, these are those books. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. So the first book needs no introduction. It is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. And this book has been all over booktube. I have a review up of it already if you have been marooned on an island and you don't know what it's about. Um, I saw it sparkling from an Australian bookshop because of the gold and I was just like, give me. Please give it to me. So the next book on this list is Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki. And I don't talk about it much, but I am pretty into minimalism. Um, I really think that a conscientious lifestyle is a good thing and um, being kind of aware of what we're buying and what we're consuming and what we keep around us is kind of a good way to live our life. So I'm very intrigued by books that are about minimalism. I have read all the greats I'm looking at you, Marie Kondo. Um, and so when I saw this, I was intrigued. So I picked it up and um, Sasaki talks a lot about how he personally has been on the journey of minimalism and what it means to him in Japan. So in the beginning there are a few really um, interesting pictures where it talks about um, how he has gone from being a maximalist, seen here, to a minimalist, seen here. And this book is quite intriguing for those reasons. So if you're not into minimalism, then this would not be the book for you. But if you are into minimalism, this is an interesting look into how one man has gone about um, implementing that into his life and how far he has gone. Some of the things that he has gone and done I personally can't do because I'm not that dedicated, but it is possible, so it is fascinating to see into his lifestyle. And the next book I picked up is Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. We follow 13-year-old Jojo who is trying to take care of his baby sister as his drug-addicted mother takes him on a very messed up family road trip um, to pick up their father from prison where he has just been let out. So. This book is kind of all over booktube right now, and I read it for Black History Month, so look out for that in the future. And honestly, it was a bit of a cover buy. Like, look at that just stunning cover. Like, wow. And it totally does tie into some of the symbolism in the book. So whoever, the co whoever designed the cover, excellent job, my friend. Excellent job. <laughs> okay, and the next book up is by Ryu Murakami, and it is Coin Locker Babies. So Ryu Murakami is really hard to get a hold of in Japan, translated, because I feel like a lot of his stuff is really gruesome, subversive, shows parts of Japan that Japan doesn't really want translated, so they don't ever sell him in bookstores here. I read In the Miso Soup last year, and it was fabulous. It is kind of new weird, it's very gritty, very dark, kind of ambiguous, kind of vague. Um, if you like other Japanese works, it's kind of along that vein, but kind of more raw. Um, so essentially, I love Ryu Murakami. So when I saw this book in the store and then I read the synopsis, I was like, how have I not read that book? It sounds like everything I want. And I am not going to summarize the synopsis for you because there are so many details I don't want to leave any out, so I'm going to go ahead and read the blurb. Okay, so here we go. Abandoned at birth in adjacent train station lockers, two troubled boys spend their youth in an orphanage with foster parents on a semi-deserted island before finally setting off for the city to find and destroy the woman who first rejected them. Both are drawn to an area of freaks and hustlers called Toxic Town. One becomes a bisexual rock singer, star of this exotic demimonde, while the other, a pole vaulter, seeks his revenge in the company of his girlfriend, Anemone, a model who has converted her condominium into a tropical swamp for her pet crocodile. Together and apart, their journey from a hot metal box to a stunning savage climax is a brutal funhouse ride through the eerie landscape of late 20th century Japan. Does that not sound completely bonkers and like it will just be the best five-star read of my entire life. 
I think yes. So those were all the books that I bought brand new from the stores. I also went in a few used stores and as we were passing by a library, there was a sale on. So each of these books I got for only a dollar. So please keep in mind, these aren't books that are necessarily exactly to my tastes, um, but they had elements that intrigued me. So sometimes you get a wild card when you go through a um, like bargain bin. Sometimes you just pick something up because you're like, I may like this, and then it blows your mind. So first up is Invisibility by Andrea Kramer. And we follow Stephen who was born invisible and cursed, and we also follow Elizabeth who wishes she could be invisible so that people would stop hurting her. And I'm hoping the story is as good as the blurb sounds and not as bad as this horrendous cover. Yes, just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> okay, and next up is Red Robe by John Courtney Grimwood. And this one is another one where I'm going to read the blurb to you because it is so complicated. All right, ex-assassin Axel Borgia has secrets. The least of them is he's just agreed to do one last hit. The only problem is he hasn't yet told his gun. His Excellency Cardinal Santo Duke faces political ruin if he can't regain the Vatican's missing billions, secreted away by dead Pope Joan. Mai is a Japanese kinder whore kidnapped and held hostage on space habitat Samsara, where the UN dumps refugees after it's cleared them from Europe's war zone. As these three people collide with each other and themselves, their actions mean the world and all its inhabitants must be changed forever. There are so many things in there that I find fascinating. Why does he have to tell his gun? Is it a person? Is it omniscient? Does it have a brain? Why are the refugees sent to a different planet? That is very cool and seems very time consumptive and money consumptive. And why did the Pope hide away billions of dollars? Yes, I'm very intrigued, you got me. So um, I will be reading this and I hope it is good. I also stopped into a few basement bookstores and I don't know why used bookstores are always in basements. I don't really understand, but they always seem to be. I'm not against them, that's just like always the fact. So the first one that I picked up is The City and the City by China Mieville. And I have heard amazing things about China Mieville pertaining to Perdido Street Station. He basically seems to be the king of new weird, which is a genre that I'm into. It's like, if the book is weird enough and like just not really fitting to other genres and it has like what the fuck spice in it, then it's like new weird and I'm here for that. Um, so in this one we follow um, Inspector Theodore Borlu of the Extreme Crime Investigations Unit as he moves between crimes that are happening across two different cities. And you would think, oh, that's like pretty normal. No. Both cities are interposed on top of each other. One is a dazzling city called Bezel, and the other one is just the sordid underbelly called Ulcoma. And I have already started reading this and it is as it builds itself to be, it is very weird, but the cities transposed on top of each other is really fascinating. So I can't wait to read it and um, I think that this is a beautiful gorgeous cover. So yeah, I am excited to find out how it is. So the next book that I picked up is We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver and as you know I really like dark twisted reads and this is a very dark twisted read that has sold over 1 million copies. So it explores the relationship between a mother named Eva and her son Kevin who has murdered his classmates, his teachers, and his friends. And we're following them two years later as she is examining um, motherhood and the disintegration of family and the mental illness of Kevin himself. I have heard that this is chilling, gripping, very controversial, and I'm very excited to read it because those are all buzzwords that I really like. So yes, dark, creepy, thank you. Okay, and the last book that I picked up is A Sense of Wonder by John Wyndham, Murray Leinster, and Jack Williamson. Um, so this is a collection of three stories and John Wyndham is the only one that I've read before and I really fell in love with him. I read um, The Chrysalids and 
The Day of the Triffids, both of which are really fascinating, very interesting, and I really like his writing style. So honestly, I don't know too much about the short stories in this volume, other than that John Wyndham wrote one of them, and that it has this absolutely amazing cover. Like, I just, you don't see covers like this anymore. Um, so I am here for it, and sold. So that wraps up my Australia haul. Let me know if you've read any of these, and if you liked them. Some of them I am anticipating as five-star reads, particularly Coin Locker Babies. That just sounds amazing. Like, it sounds like very similar to if you mashed up um, Oryx and Crake, and um, maybe something by Haruki Murakami. It sounds like that would be this book, and I'm just so, so thrilled. Um, so let me know if you've read any of these, and if you would recommend that I prioritize some over others, and I hope that you are having an amazing reading month, and if you like this video, then please go ahead and give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button, it would really mean a lot, and without further ado, I'm gonna say bye for now. Toodles! Bye!